So as we go into the final two games of the league season, we've still got a chance to get playoffs. However, we need a lot of results to go our way and we need to win both games. Hello and welcome back to the Real Dayal. Today we have the final two league games of the season against Real Vallecano and Seville B. Since you were last here, we've only played two games. Uh, Valladolid, a 1-0 win there. Anthony Lozano getting the goal there in that all-important game. And then a 3-2 win against second place at the time, Cadiz. Huge win that was as well. Uh, it looked a little bit nervy for a while. Sal Bron got a penalty in the 79th minute, which he scored. But it was 2-2 for a while, uh, with Cadiz scoring the two goals uh, from their two shots on target in the entire game. So it was a little bit nervy, but we did manage to get there in the end to collect the three points, which is a good result, I've got to say. It was in the Valladolid game. Uh, Garaletta has been injured, so I don't think he'll feed... It won't feature in the Valacana game, he may feature in the Seville game, uh, but he has been out for a little while. What that means for the table is that we sit 8th still, uh, level on points with Tenerife, they've got a slightly better goal difference, but with two games to go, we can take 6 points from those two games. Uh, we're only 5 points off Huesca and Sporting Gijon, so if they lose both their games, and uh, one of them lose both their games, we win both our games, and get a better goal difference than Tenerife or they slip up somewhere, then we will get into the playoffs. However, as you can tell, that is a huge ask and a lot has to go in our favour. So, uh, fingers crossed it happens, but the likelihood of it happening is well, it's very slim. So, this then is the lineup for the first game against Vallecano. Uh, we're going back to this 4 3 3 sort of formation. It seems to be working all right. It's the exact same lineup that got us the win against Cadiz in last episode or last game, rather. So we start with Juan Carlos in goal, a back line of Catungo, Fernandez, Hernandez, and Johansson. Uh, Fulin, Fulch, and Mariga start in that midfield. Obviously, uh, Garoletta injured, just come back from it, but not really fit enough for it. Uh, Aaron on the left, Berhon on the right, and then Lozano starting up front. So kickoff is upon us today. Uh, we're away from home, but still playing in our usual blue kit. Valor Carno in the white kit as it was in both games last episode I think are as well so I think we can now sort of reflect on the season and I think we have been doing pretty well this season we started off really poorly uh, but the way we have recovered is pretty good and it's kind of annoying because we started so poorly I think if we hadn't started so badly we would be up around that sort of first second third sort of position I think if we'd had a better start to the season not lost so many games the issue we have is that we lose way too many games. Watch this highlight, but I'll show you the table then uh, in a second. Can we just talk about it a little bit? Sal Baron, uh, gets himself tackled by Rats, and now Valacano coming forward with the ball, and Barber coming forward with it, cutting through in the middle with a great pass through to Last, and Last, his shot saved by the goalkeeper there. So this is what I mean by the table. If we look across, we've won 19, drawn 8, and lost 14, which is a lot of games, I've got to say. Uh, we've lost quite a lot of games this season it's not great if we look into like the, the playoffs and, and the promoted size they've lost i mean 12 cordova 12 huesca but no one's lost more than that really that's where we want to be they've won a lot more games than those teams as well so if we can just convert a few of those losses into wins next season i think we should be a lot better off so we're still losing games more games than teams in the bottom half of the tables in some occasions like here's numantia with 14 we've lost 14 as well so we really need to Get a bit more of a solid defence next season. That's what we need to focus on. Just improving that defence, making it a little bit more solid. Also, look at this. No one else that we're sort of concerned with are playing at the same time as us right now. Uh, it looks like Tenerife lost their game, actually, because they've also played 41 but not playing there, so they must have lost at some point. Uh, we obviously have a decent chance as well. Gihon not played yet, but Huesca have, so of course uh, we're still in touch and distance with Huesca. A win today is what we need, and right now it's not looking likely as Valacano come forward. I think we've missed a few highlights where they've come close, and this time they have put the ball in the back of the net. Lass putting it in the back of the net from distance there. That is not the way we want it. Lozano on the ball now as we try and come forward in the last few moments of the second half, although we just get tackled, Last coming forward once again. He looks like a decent player so far, Last, He's been a bit of a troublemaker. He's shot there. Not very good to try and give him some credit, but we may try and scout him out. It's very interesting. We've had the exact same lineup as a team against Cadiz, and yet today we are <laughs> just not very good compared to where we last game. Well, the first highlight of the second half comes in the 63rd minute, so a little bit late on, to be fair. We've lost the ball again to that last chap. He's really, really good, although we've won it back. Sal Baron on the ball, plays it out towards Fulch. Fulch gets the ball across to Aaron, who's looking pretty dangerous on the edge of the area. Gets it out to Johannesson, who can 
put in a decent delivery. We know he can. He doesn't put it in there, but Fulham plays it out towards Aaron, who gets it oh, nearly back across. Katungo doesn't quite win it. And now De Thomas is coming forward for Valacano now as they try and build their own little counter-attack now coming forward now on this right side of the pitch. They put a great ball forward, to be fair, across the area. De Thomas is there to score the goal, and I think that could be it for our playoff hopes. Oh, and there's number three. I wasn't particularly paying attention, uh, but it's it's beyond all doubt now. Balacano three, Oviedo nil, and okay. I'm really not sure why things have just turned around to uh, us being very, very poor. We've grabbed, oh, I was about to say we've grabbed a goal back there, but the keeper made an absolutely incredible save there. Fair play. They've got another chance now on the edge of the area. Pass it back out to their corner taker. It, they've hit the crossbar. They're all over as Valacano. And this is what I mean. I think I said it last episode, but we just aren't good enough yet defensively. We're not solid enough. Look, look at these stats. And we've had some decent chances ourselves. But Valakana made good use of their 18 shots and 7 on target. They've been much better than us today, much more clinical. And if we went up this season, we wouldn't be ready for it. We have to improve next season, uh, really try and get some decent results under our belt next season. Not lose as many games. That's been our major issue, I think, this season. Just losing too many games, especially at the start of the season. We couldn't, couldn't buy a win, basically. We were really, really poor. So... We just aren't ready to go up this year. Next year, we're going to have a much better squad. A lot of the dead wood is going to be leaving. Uh, a couple of the old... Obviously, this whole thing is meant to be for youth development, uh, which isn't working out too well so far on the grounds that the youth players aren't fantastic. But we will play them next game to give them a bit of a first-team experience. We've got nothing to play for next game against Seville, so it doesn't matter too much. Here we go. Cross comes in. There's number four. Did Thomas with another goal... His second of the game, the fourth for Valacano. This is a real router. And there we go. Valacano 4, Oviedo 0. Not a very good game at all, that. Aggressively not happy with that result at all. The boys, I mean, none of them played particularly well. This That could have been the last game for some of those players out there, I've got to say. A few of the older boys will be leaving the club at the end of their contracts. I mean, Mariga's going anyway. He's already agreed contracts with somewhere else. Uh, there's, yeah, there's going to be a few departures, I think, from this side. Now, I did mention that it's youth development. However, the youth development hasn't worked. Well, it's, it's doing well. You know, we've got some decent players coming through. Uh, but I'm not quite sure it's going to be the best youth development. It might take a few years to actually get it going. So I've also got another club philosophy in. Uh, sign youngsters for the first team. So we should be developing our own players and also bringing in some young players as well for the future. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Uh, a bit of a youth thing. So maybe if we bring some young players in. I think if they train at the club for like three or four years before they, uh, before they turn 21 or something like that, then they become trained by the club, which may make them a club youth player. I, I, I'm not quite sure. It might work out like that. If someone knows, please let me know in the comment section. So we've got two philosophies then, develop youth system and uh, sign youngsters for the first team. So that should be pretty good and should put us in some good stead, I think. Oh, Anthony Lozano has been called up to the World Cup for Honduras. Obviously, uh, the World Cup's slightly different in this because we start like at the start of the season. So the World Cup qualifying hasn't been finished yet. So Honduras obviously qualified in-game for the World Cup and Lozano's been called up for it. Hopefully, we're going to get him back next season. I'd love to see him at the club once again. Probably on loan again. Uh, what's his transfer status like? Is he listed? He's not listed. Um, he's not listed, but he is... Well, he doesn't say anything. He says not needed there as well. So maybe... He will come to us. He's got one more year on his contract. Valued at 1.9... That's too much for us to buy at 1.9 million. But... You never know, they may sell him on the cheap, or maybe we'll get him on loan again, something like that. I keep wanting to as well, like, uh, increase, where is it, uh, where's it gone? Uh, I want to increase our youth recruitment and junior coaching, but all it says is cut back on youth recruitment or finance, uh, decrease junior coaching budget. It wouldn't let me increase it or anything like that yet, so I'm sort of just waiting around for it to say, yeah, increase it if you want, because I know it's not the best, like, it's adequate and average. So I feel like we do need something better than that, obviously. We can get better than that. The board won't let me have it yet, which is a bit annoying for the youth development side of things. So here we go. These are contracts that are coming up for renewal uh, on the grounds that Tochi has been injured for most of this season. I don't think he is going to be staying. So he'll be going soon. Uh, Fernandez, I reckon he's going to go as well. He's getting on. He's, what, 32 years old now. Uh, he's still got a little bit. We may give him a year contract or something like that. Uh, in fact, should we offer him a year contract? His existing contract's on 3.6k. He wants 3.3. I'd like to take that down to 2. I mean, I'm going to keep him. He's not really going to be used next season, hopefully. Uh, so I'm only going to keep him down there uh, in case we maybe need him. If he, want, if he accepts 2k and like less per appearance fee 
and less per clean sheet bonus, then maybe we'll keep him. Uh, but he's not going to accept. He, want, he wants a lot of money. Fernandez is going. Roger isn't cut out for us anymore. Two and a half star current ability is not good enough to get promoted next year. So all three of those first team players are going. Then I think there's a lot of B team players that I need to sort of think about. Uh, I think anyone with under two star potential is going to go. And then we'll have to try and get someone else in. I think what I'll do off camera is probably offer anyone who's got more than two star potential a contract. Everyone else can probably go. I do also want to bring in quite a few players next season for the B team. Just players with like three or four star potential. Put them into the B team. Just see what happens to them. We hopefully should have bigger wages next year. With bigger wage budget. Hopefully that will help us out. Uh, and we can just get a few more players involved. Uh, and really get us going for next season. Hopefully get a bit more of that youth recruitment sort of thing going. Oh the B team manager has just left. By, I mean I didn't have any say in this. He, he's just gone. Uh, okay. Unsure why he's just gone. End of the season for them, so I, maybe maybe he just wanted the one season. But I'm a little bit upset by that. I've got to say he was a decent manager as well. I don't know. Look, can we just offer him a contract? Approach just he doesn't want to join. Okay, fair play. Well, that's a bit of a shame. We we'll have to find a new coach or manager for the B team next season. I'm not really sure how the B team have done. Um, I when I made this, I forgot to load any more leagues below this league that we're in. So next season the extra Spanish leagues come in, but I forgot to load them up for whatever reason when I was actually making the game. So I don't know how they've actually done this season. Right, so last game of the season then, we're going to try and play the youngsters out there. There's a mixture of youngsters and, and some normal players out there, but Rumbo starts in goal. He's been our backup this season. Two-star currently, four-star potential. He's not really seen much of him apart from maybe the first episode when I spoke about him, uh, but he's in goal. Uh, Katungo and Johansson as the full-backs as per usual, but the youth prospect that came through our youth development this year Diaz and Ongoiba start at the back. Diaz, uh, one star current ability, but got th four and a half star potential now. He's gone up a little bit. Uh, Ongoiba, how is he getting on? Uh, again, he's gone up potential wise a little bit to four and a half star. So they both started on four, but he's now four and a half, both of them, which is good going. Fulin starts in the middle with uh, Gareth there as well, but Dylan also comes in as that attacking playmaker. He's a player that we brought in as well, two star current ability for star potential. Uh, Gomez, who you know all about, is starting that attacking midfield position. He's a youngster. Felix, also a youngster, starting there in that target man position. And Lozano, of course, starting up front as that complete forward. So hopefully, I mean, it's not going to be a great game. We could play a lot of youngsters who are unproven and not really very good. But hopefully it'll give them a taste of senior level football and uh, they should do all right. Right, kickoff is upon us. We're at home again. Most of our games at the last part of the season seem to be at home. Um, which must mean we have quite a few away games at some point. As I say, this game is, is just about giving these youth guys a little chance out there, giving them a taste of first team football, which they need to improve. So hopefully today they'll take a lot of lessons from this game. Of course, they're playing the Seville B team, which is probably comprised of a lot of youngsters as well, who are probably equally as good or bad as our players on the pitch right now. So it should be a relatively interesting game. Chance now, the first highlight of the game, looks like it's coming towards Seville now as they try and walk, work a ball forward. Although, Fallin makes a nice interception. Felix can come forward with it now. Lozano on the ball with lots of space, puts it back out towards Felix. Can he get it out to his, his fullback? Not quite. Puts an awful ball forward to Pozzo. And now Seville trying to counter-attack Getting forward now with a few numbers. And Paul comes into the middle. The ball got to its man. Hit the post luckily for us. Because I don't think Carlos or Rumbo was going to get to that actually. Uh, and it was cleared behind for a corner. The corner comes in and it's cleared by Felix. The ball people actually coming back from up front there to clear that ball. Free kick now for Seville. Pozzo puts a ball in and it is headed in by one of their players up front. A decent set piece there. We should have done a lot better. Uh, obviously the issues will come from that young centre-back partnership. Who aren't really used to dealing with things. Although Johansson is the one whose rating has gone down by quite a bit. So maybe he was the man that was meant to be marking him and he didn't win his header. It's not these youngsters that are doing the, 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 the bad stuff here. In fact, they're one of the best players on the pitch. Well, I mean, it's not been an awful first half, but we, we've not really challenged up front much, have we, at all, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, I will go with what our assistant says. Go aggressive. Show me something else in that second half. Everyone seems to be motivated by that. Um, they may be motivated, but will they actually make a change or not? I don't know. Usually, it means nothing happens. They may be motivated, but it doesn't seem to change much at all. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe I should be changing tactics as well as motivating them as well. That's probably part of the issue, but uh, I'm too stubborn to change things right now. It's the last game of the season. We don't need to change things too much. There's a lot of stuff going on at the top of the table, though. Uh, Zaragoza already confirmed champions, but Kadith must be losing uh, and Cordoba and Gihon winning. So obviously Kadita dropped down to fourth and Cordoba actually could go up uh, automatic promotion-wise after Kadita have been there basically all season, actually. We've got a chance now as Gomez puts through Lozano. That's the first chance we've had really all game. 
and Lozano puts it wide of the mark. So it's not been a very productive day for us up front today. Still not had a shot on target in 62 minutes of the game, which is bad. David Cameron, of course, we, we played Seville earlier on in the season. We realised that David Cameron, after leaving office, went to Seville B to play on the wing for them. Uh, he, he's basically set up a goal for them there. Didn't quite get the last assist. But uh, Seville do manage to get the goal after talking about him. In fact, should we look at it? Oh, he's actually their right back. I thought he was their winger. Uh, I mean, to be fair, yeah, he's on the right of centre. He actually looks pretty decent, to be fair. Oh, my good, He looks all right. I actually kind of want to sign David Cameron. Uh, let's keep scouting him. Let's get more scout reports from him. But um, David Cameron is... Oh, he can play anywhere up the right. I think he loves this, doesn't he? Just like real life, he's in English politics. He's right of centre, so... In football, right? I mean, this is great. Right, David Cameron, hopefully, is going to be signing for us. We just need Karl Marx on the left wing. Right, chance for us to come forward now, although that ball was rubbish from Johansson, but he does win it back as Garoletta now plays it through to Gomez, who puts, tries to get a ball up to Felix. It didn't quite work out for him, unfortunately. Uh, but Johansson wins it back again this time. Again, it's just a bit of a yo-yo back and forth in the middle of the park right now. Seville trying to come forward now, actually. They seem to have... Gained a little bit of ground. A ball, great ball across, actually, to their man there. He was unmarked completely. And he's, again, Katungo just left him completely. The ball comes in. Fernandez puts it over for Seville. But they've been all over us today. And they do deserve to win this game. Of course, we never expected to win it in the first place. Because we are playing youngsters out there, essentially. We're not playing proper first-team players. We're playing players that need to be blooded into the squad, really. That's why we're playing them today. Nothing to play for. May as well just use them. It does mean we drop down to ninth. Uh, so we'll go up to eighth in the table. But again, it doesn't particularly matter too much at this stage of the season. We're still top half, which is what the board wanted. Interestingly, I think actually Oviedo came ninth in real life. Or they're in ninth. I can't remember if their season's finished just yet. Uh, I know it's very, very close to finishing if it's not quite finished yet. And I think they were in ninth. If they stayed there or not, I'm not entirely sure. But they were ninth. So if we finish where they finished in real life, that's... Spooky. And there we go. It's not actually been a bad game. 10 shots to 12 shots. Pretty even possession. Things like that. They just need better use of their chances. And I've got to say, I am impressed with the boys that came through. You know, the boys that came through. Especially the youngsters at centre-back partnership. They did pretty well together. So there we go. That is the end of the first season of The Real Deal. Uh, we'll skip forward a few days, see if like the end of season awards come through or something like that. That's kind of what I like to look at. On Goiba, though, became the youngest ever Oviedo player with 16 years and 162 days. So I must be doing something right. Must be doing something right. Here we go, end of season awards. This is the team of the year. This is what everyone thinks is, is pretty good. Qualos in goal, Varela, Valentini, uh, Hernandez and Johansson at the back. Uh, full in, Rochen, Fulch in the middle, Aaron, Tocci and Lozano up front. So, I mean, I can't really disagree with that too much. I may put Fernandes in there ahead of Valentini, but again, that's a pretty accurate starting 11 team of the season, I've got to say. Johansson got player of the season, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, I wouldn't expect him to do that. Also got young player of the season as well. Felix signing of the season, apparently, and goal of the season goes to Lozano, which is interesting. Uh, Aaron ended up top goal scorer in the end. Uh, Johansson and Lozano, top assists. So, I mean, full in, not the most disciplined player out there. 11 yellow cards, but Valentini with two reds. So, interesting. Again, it says here we've been expected to claim a top half finish, and it's what we did. Nothing too special this season, but I think it's something that we can really uh, build on for next season. The only team leader, apparently, is full in, which is interesting. Hopefully, he stays around next season. There was a lot of interest around him. Uh, there was in January, but no bids, but there have been a lot coming up into the end of the season. So maybe he will go, maybe he'll stay. I don't know. We'll have to see next season. And finally, what do we plan to achieve for next season? We have to talk to the boys about this. Right. Uh, we're not going to get automatic promotion. I feel like we could get playoffs, but they may be a little bit nervy about that. So I'm going to say we're aiming for top half next time around. And everyone loves that, which is all right by me. Uh, top half is good, obviously, but I will be aiming for playoffs next season. That was exactly the sort of reaction I was after. Well done, boys. Morale sort of changes a little bit, but no, everyone's kind of okay at the moment, I've got to say. Uh, they're all off on their winter break now, and I'm off to go and play pre-season, bring in a few players, get rid of a few players. Hopefully, we're going to have a much stronger squad next year. We need to improve defensively. That's the main thing. We're going to have no strikers either when Lozano goes and Tocci goes. So striker is probably also a main target for... In fact, everywhere is probably a main target. So as long as we improve, I'm happy. Right, thank you very much for watching season one of The Real Deal. I hope you have enjoyed it. It's been actually really good fun to play. And the support I've had from you guys is absolutely incredible. Every episode nearly on a 1,000 views and things like that. It's so good to see so many of you guys enjoying it and, and getting involved. So thank you very much on that regard for me on the personal notes. To join us next season when we're going to be bigger, 
better and looking for promotion. So I will see you next season. Have a good one and thank you for watching.